uh, we're going to begin right now at his request for Rand Paul. <laughs> Good to be here again. I was just telling somebody we'll probably be here quite a bit because uh, my campaign manager David Adams is from here. So we've already been here once. Mary Glenn was nice enough to invite us and we came over to uh, the country club a month or so ago. In, I think it was in the winter of 1776, December 19th to be exact, Thomas Paine was campaigning or in a military campaign with George Washington. And it wasn't going so well. They had lost in Boston, they had lost in New York, and they were fleeing south, and it was very cold and snowy, and they hadn't won a battle. And Thomas Paine made the decision to leave the troops at George Washington's request, he went to Philadelphia and he wrote Crises. In Crises, he starts out and he says, these are the times that try men's souls. I think that represents where we stand now. I think we live in a time that tries men's souls. I think there's an unease upon the land. I think there's a discontent. I think you can see the evidence as we look around. You can see the evidence uh, through the Tea Party movement. I went and spoke to my Tea Party in Bowling Green. We have about 50,000 people there. 700 people showed up. The largest event we've ever had, political event in our county probably. The people who are the detractors of this movement, the people who are often on the left say, oh, that's just a bunch of Republican organizers, or it's Fox News, or this and that. But it's not. If you get out there and meet the Tea Party movement, you find that it is discontent. It is people not just unhappy about taxes necessarily, but unhappy about the debt that's consuming our country. They're also a little bit unhappy with us. And that's why as I go around, I say we need to self-examine as a party. We have presided over the doubling of the debt from five to ten trillion dollars. There are many people out there, people in the middle, people independents and moderates, who say, yeah, well, I like the Republicans, but they just want to cut taxes for the rich. They won't cut any spending. In fact, my congressman used to come down, and I was friends with him. I would introduce him at my Lions Club, and I would say, look, you get an A-plus for cutting taxes, but you get a C-minus for cutting spending. We haven't been good at following through on our message. I've been to 25 counties so far in Kentucky, and I've yet to meet one Republican voter that would have voted for the bank bailout. And yet, half of our Republican leadership voted for it. So I think that's what this primary is about. It's about deciding, do you want new leadership? Do you want somebody who believes in the Republican platform and will vote that way when they get to Washington? The other thing that's discontent and this unease that's out there is that people are tired of career politicians. They're tired of people who go to Washington for 40 years and lose their way. They're looking for people who will go up, believe in something, and vote for it, and come back to live like the rest of us under the laws and not above the laws. That's why I strongly support term limits and think that we have to have term limits if we're ever going to have any change in our government. I also support rules with regard to the budget. We have to have some kind of rule that says we have to balance the budget. It works in Kentucky. We argue back and forth about the budget, but in the final analysis, we have to balance our budget in Kentucky. 30 states have this. Contrast that with California, which is about to fall off into the ocean if we don't bail them out, and we probably will be asked to bail them out in Kentucky. Contrast that with the federal government, who essentially has a printing press. And that's what we've been doing. We even have Republicans who are voting for cash for clunkers. I was out in the western part of the state at a Republican meeting like this, and I got up for several minutes and talked about how you could get your cash for clunkers. I was talking to somebody earlier, and they, we talked about McGovern. McGovern was laughed out of the race in 72 because he asked, he said he'd give everybody $1,000, and everybody knew that was a ridiculous economic proposal. But now we have people offering $4,500. But it's not just the Democrats. We can blame it all on Obama, but it was our party and our administration saying go to the mall after 9-11. Just everybody go to the mall and things will be okay. Here's your stimulus money. Just go to the mall. It'll be okay. What happened to the old-fashioned ideas that you work hard and you save to become wealthy as a country or as a people? We've lost that. We've lost the believability in many ways as a party because we are not seen as fiscally conservatives. 
I think there are two ways you can win an election in Kentucky, and I think I have the ability to bring our message to a general audience and attract new voters. But there are two ways you can do it. One way you can do it is by running as a conservative in the primary, and then when you get to the general, you run as a Democrat. You say, I can get you more federal projects than the Democrats can. And that becomes your message, and you think you can attract people because we become just like the Democrats and we'll peel some of them away. Or you can run as a true conservative in the primary and keep your message and attract people in the fall by articulating our message in a way that's appealing. For example, I think the message is that the debt is drowning us. The debt is out of control. The debt next year will be 13% of gross national product. Federal spending will be 28% of gross national product. If you look at how fast we're spending it, $53,000 a second. It's hard to fathom. People say billions. Now they're talking about trillions. People can't even conceive of what a billion dollars is. There's something out there on the internet that says, what is a billion? Try to imagine what a billion is. A billion seconds ago, Jesus was alive. A billion minutes ago, no, a billion seconds ago was 1959. A billion minutes ago, Jesus was alive. A billion hours ago was the Stone Age. But a billion dollars ago, at the rate the federal government spends it, was about seven minutes ago. Things are out of control, and you are not going to get a change just by simply electing somebody with an R next to their name. You need something more than that. And I've told people that the Republican Party, of which I'm a member of, my father, my grandparents have been Republicans, we've all been Republicans, but we self-examine and we don't just say everything is okay. We say that the party is an empty vessel unless we imbue it with values. We have to represent something or it's no longer worth being a Republican and it's not worth just electing someone just to say we have more votes than you do now unless we're going to do something with it. We squandered eight years of being in charge of the presidency in both houses and we let the deficit get out of control. We have to do a better job but it means we need better people. There are some other reforms that I would promote and these are things that I think bring people in the general audience our way. One is that we tell them that the debt leads to inflation. And inflation hurts those on fixed income and those on the lowest part of the socioeconomic ladder the worst. Those are people that have been drifting to the Democrats. We get them to come back to them not by saying we'll be like the Democrats and give you a handout. We get those people to come our way by saying big government's not your friend. The debt's not your friend. It leads to inflation. And when you go to the pump or you go to the grocery store and your prices are higher, who gets hurt the worst? Those who don't have much money. Those are the people we should be attracting with our message to our party. And we can win elections again and become a majority party in our country if we attract those people. There are ways to do it and maintain and be strong with your message. Another thing I've talked about is that we as Republicans will talk about and say, oh, we'll just balance the budget. It's just that welfare queen. We cut that, cut that welfare queen off and we can balance the budget. But it's not that complicated. I mean, it's not that simple. There's a lot of this money that's going to corporations. So we have to say that we will, ref we will reform the process to get rid of some of the corruption that special interests are bringing to Washington. One reform that I've promoted is that when you sign a federal contract of more than a million dollars, we make it a clause in that contract that says you accept voluntarily by accepting this federal money and this federal contract you accept this clause that says you will not lobby Congress during the terms of this contract. You accept that you will not give PAC contributions to candidates during the terms of this contract. I think this is a better way to reform the system than what we did with McCain-Feingold. What I was telling someone earlier who had a Second Amendment shirt on is that we made the mistake as Republicans, at least some Republicans, by passing McCain-Feingold. It was Democrats and Republicans, but obviously some Republicans. McCain-Feingold makes it illegal within 60 days of the election for me to buy an ad on television saying Ben Chandler voted for gun control or Ben Chandler voted for this or that. That's illegal in our country. Illegal. I have a taxpayer group. It's illegal for me to say my congressman voted to raise taxes 60 days before the election.